Hello everyone, in this video tutorial, we will create an agentic retrieval augmented generation system that retrieves the data from external sources and generate insightful response. Before we go ahead and start looking into the code, let's first look at what is agentic rag. An agentic rag is being built on the basic or the traditional rag concept by introducing an agent that makes decision during the workflow. So the agentic rag is being built on the traditional rag or the basic rag. So in the traditional rag, if we add agent, so this become an agentic rag. So an agentic rag build agentic rag builds on the basic rag concept by introducing agent that makes decision during the workflow. So if you add an agent into the traditional rag, that become an agentic rag. So what is the basic rag or the traditional retriever augmented generation system? So a basic rag retrieves relevant information from a database, from a vector database and uses the language model to generate a natural response. So this is how the traditional retrieval augmented generation system works. While in the case of agentic retrieval augmented generation system, we can add dynamic decision making by enabling the LLM to decide whether additional steps like using external tools or fetching more data are needed before generating a response. So this is how we can differentiate between agentic rag and basic rag. So if you don't know about agentic rag, do check out my other video tutorial in which I have clearly explained the concept of agentic rag. So now uh, in this tutorial, we will be using LangGraph to create an agentic retrieval augmented generation system. So what is LangGraph? LangGraph is a, popular, a Python library designed to build stateful multi-step application and integrate LMs with external tools. It uses a graph-based approach to define workflows where each step represents a specific operation. So in this tutorial, we will build a workflow where the user can ask a question. The agent, uh, which will have an LLM, which decides whether it needs additional context or not. And if additional information are needed, and the system will retrieve those information from the documents or from the external sources. They can be uh, from the internet or from any vector database as well. The agent generates a final response combining retrieve from text and its reasoning. Okay. So this is how we'll be creating this uh, work. We'll be building a workflow. And I have mentioned the four steps that we will be following in this workflow. So in the step number one, we need to install all the required packages. So I've already run all the code. I will be explaining you the complete code. I will not be writing the code in this tutorial. So we require two, uh, like four packages. We require the LangGraph package. We require the LangChain package. We also require the LangChain OpenAI package as well. So now you can see we have installed all the required packages. So now we'll import all the required libraries. We require the chat OpenAI because we will be using OpenAI model as the LLM and we will be uh, creating our text into embeddings. Uh, so then we'll save those embeddings into a vector database. So we will to convert our text into embeddings. We will use OpenAI embeddings and uh, we are using unstructured URL loader so that we can load the data from the uh urls okay then we are using recursive character text splitter so that we can split our text into smaller text chunks uh like you know that each uh open a model on a uh, the gemini model they have an input token limit like the, the maximum number of english characters they can accept in the input so if we have a huge amount of text uh like if the text exceed that token limit then we cannot pass the text directly into the large language model we basically split the text into smaller text chunks before we pass that text into the large language model okay and here you can see chroma we are using chroma as our vector data base okay so we will be saving our data into chroma vector database so basically we are convert we will convert our text into embeddings the reason we convert our text into embeddings is that so that we can basically compress the size of our text okay so right we are just just give me a second
let's run this again. Okay, yeah, we buy it. Shogun's card on here. I don't know what's the letters. Let's run this again now. Okay, that's all. Now, I think this will work now. So now you can see we have imported all the required libraries. So now we are just setting up our OpenAI API key. So if you want to get your own OpenAI API key, you can just go to platform.openai.com. From here, you can just, uh, I have, you can see apps to sign in with, in, sign in with my OpenAI account. Then from here, you can just go to API keys and you can just create your own API key. Okay. So it's not free. It has some costs associated. So you can just check the billing uh, to just check the cost. Okay. So here I'm just setting up my OpenAI API key over here. Uh, what's that doing? OpenAI API key. Okay. String inspector. Okay, let me just check that order now. Uh, I just need to provide this the notebook access. So now let's run this again. Okay. And why it's doing error? Let me check this. Now I have just fixed up this error. So now it will work fine. Okay. So now uh, I will just go ahead now. So now we will create a tool so that we can retrieve the relevant documents or we can retrieve the relevant data. So now you can see that I have just created a function over here by the name retrieve context. So inside this function, I am just passing these three URLs. So we are using unstructured URL loader so that we can just extract the data from these three links URLs. Then after extracting all the data from these three URLs, we are just saving the data into this variable docs. Then in the next step, we are using recursive characters text splitter to split all the text that we have extracted and save into this variable docs into smaller text chunks. As I told you that each closed source or open source model has an input token limit. And if our data exceeds that token limit, we cannot then we cannot pass that data to that model so therefore we are just splitting our text into smaller text chunks and after splitting that data into smaller text chunks uh, then we will create embeddings for those text chunks and so this way so if our data input data exceeds the input token limit so that we can pass to the LLMs therefore we are just splitting our text into smaller text chunks so we are creating a uh, chunk size of 2000 English character like each chunk will have maximum number of 2000 English character and there will be an overlap of 50 characters among these oh, text chunks okay so and here you can see that we are using chroma as our vector database uh, you can use files which is Facebook AI similarity search or you can use pinecone as your vector database as well but currently in this tutorial we are using chroma as our vector database and in this Chroma Vector database, we are basically saving text in the form of embeddings. So after converting the text into smaller text chunks, then we use OpenAI embeddings to convert the text into embeddings. The reason that we are converting our input text into embeddings is that so that we can reduce the size of the text chunks. Okay. So after we extract the data from these three URLs, then we create uh, split the data into smaller text chunks. And after we split the data into smaller text chunks, then we create embeddings for those text chunks. Then now to create embeddings for those text chunks, I'm using OpenAI embeddings. The reason that we use uh, create embeddings for our text chunks so that we can compress the size of the text chunk. And then after creating embeddings for each of the text chunks, we are saving those embeddings into the Chroma vector database. Okay. So when the user asks the question, we will retrieve uh, we will when the user asks a question we create embeddings for those uh, question and then using those embeddings we retrieve the data from our vector database so you can you can see that 
uh, we have the vector store where we have saved our embeddings. When the user asks a question, we uh, we convert that question into embeddings, and then uh, we retrieve the data from our vector stores based on those embeddings. So now you can see that we have created a retrieval tool, and agent will decide whether we want we will extract the data or retrieve the data from this retrieval tool or not. So now we'll go ahead and we will create agent and tools. Okay. So now you can see that now we have created a retrieval tool over here. So now, now we have, you can see that we have just created a tools which contains available retrieval tools. So now you can see that we have only one available retrieval tool and I've just passed this retrieval tool, which is retrieve context over here. Okay. So now you can see next we have tool node over here. Uh, tool node basically wrap the tools like we have passed over here. So we have only one retrieval tool, which is retrieve context. So tool node basically wrap these tools into a land graph node. So the workflow can run them when the agent chooses. So the agent will decide whether we will run this tool or not. So our agent will decide whether we will use this tool or not. So based on the user query, if the agent finds that uh, it needs to retrieve the data from this tool, then it will produce a response tools. It means that uh, we will call this tool so that we can retrieve the data. Okay. So now we have wrapped this tool into our land graph node. I'm going ahead, we are now just instantiating our open AI chat model over here. We are just I'm just using GPT-4 Omini because it has very less cost associated with it. And uh, I'm just setting the temperature value to zero. Okay. So now going ahead, uh, we will create a function which will uh, decide whether we need to continue or stop the workflow okay so so now you can see over here we have this created a function which will decide whether we want to continue or stop the funds uh, whether we need to continue or stop the workflow okay so if the lm if the agents make our if the agents returns uh, if after if the agent talks to the lln and agent then the agent will run this should continue function okay so after the talking to the llm agent will run this should continue function okay if this function returns the tools then this means that it the agent will go to that tool node and it will then retrieve the tool results from here retrieve context okay so if this so after talk after the agent talks to the llm I'm just trying to make it simple. After the agent talks to the LM, and then this agent will run this should continue function. If this function returns tools, then this means that our agent will go to the tool retrieval tool over here, and it will retrieve the data from this retrieval tool. Okay. And if this function returns end, then this will end the workflow. Okay. So now you can see that now I'm just creating a chat call model function. Okay. Uh, so basically agent basically run this call model function on the user input message. Okay. So that, so you basically agent talks to the LLM using this call model function and the input to the LLM will be the user message. Okay. So after, uh, after talking to the LLM, uh, after the agent has talked to the LLM using the call model function, then it runs the should continue function to decide whether it needs to make a tool call or not. So if this function returns tools, then it will call this retrieval tool like or any other tool available over here so that then it will extract the data from our backend database. Okay. So first of all, agent will run the call model function and the input to this function will be about the user query and this uh, function in this function the agent will talk to the llm okay after talking to the llm agent will run the should continue function in this function the agent will return like uh, if it wants to use the tools it will return tools then we will use the retrieval tool and if it, does, if it doesn't want to use any tool then it will return the end okay now we will build the workflow with the help of land graph the first step is to run the agent. 
agent node runs the call model function on the user message to talk to the large language model. Then it uses the should continue function to decide the next step. If the output of the should continue function returns tool, then it goes to the tool node to get two results. Else, if it returns end, then this will end the workflow. Okay. So now if, if the should continue function output returns tools, then it will go to the tool node to get the two results and produce a final output. Okay. After the tools retrieve the context and gives us the output, the workflow returns to the agent, which consumes the retrieve text and generates an updated response. If no further tools are needed, the execution will end and this will provide me the final output. Okay. So now you can see that here we are just uh, initializing the memory server over here. Like you can see that memory server persists the workflow state. So you can resume or inspect the past runs. Okay. Now you can see here we are just running the app. And here you can see I'm just passing my input query over here. And you can see here we have the response. So let's just run all these uh, cells which we haven't yet run. So I will just run all these cells now. So here you can see that I just uh, added the complete workflow over here. I will just explain you after this as we get the final output from here. So now you can see that I just asked explain what a list is in Python. Okay. So you can see that it has given me creating a list and it has provided me a, quite a list in Python. A list is a built in data structure that allows you to store an order collection of items. Uh, now you can see it has provided me a very detailed response. Over here, it has provided me some examples of list as well. Okay. So now I will just show you how this complete workflow work. So the first step is to run the agent. Agent node basically runs the call model function so that it can talk to the LLM. I have created the call model function above. Like you can see over here, we have this call model function. Okay. And here, uh, basically, agent node basically run this call model function on the user message to talk to the LLM. Okay, and you can see we have the should continue function over here. Okay, now I will just go back with the uh, workflow. So our first step is to run the agent and agent node basically runs the call model function on the user message to talk to the LLM. Okay, then it will use the should continue function to decide the next step. Okay, if the output from the should continue function is tools, then it will go to the tool node and it will use the retrieval tool so you can see that we have only one retrieval tool over here which is retrieve context like you can see that we have created this over here okay in this retrieve context context tool we are just uh, retrieving or extracting the data from these three urls okay and then we are just uh, splitting that retrieve data into smaller text chunk and then we are just uh, creating embeddings for those text chunk and then we are just saving the data into a vector database okay Okay, so if the output from the should continue function is tools, then it will go to the tool retrieval tool so that it can extract the required response or required data from this retrieval tool. Okay, so after the we have the retrieve retrieve data, then this workflow will again return to the agent, which basically consumes the retrieve data and generates an updated response. If no further tools are needed, the execution will end over here. So that's all from this tutorial. Like in this tutorial, we have seen that how we can uh, create an agentic retrieval augmented generation system that retrieves data from external sources and generate an insightful response. So that's all from this tutorial. Thank you for watching this, this tutorial. See you all in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.